I had a project roll in this week that made me realize I don't have a drill press. Well, I kind of do, so let me show you my little drill presses I've been using and I have an idea for making one a little bit better for now until I find what I need. I got this little baby drill press over here. I picked that and this vise that's in the foreground up at an auction for $20. That was a heck of a good deal. Uh, obviously, that's not going to be big enough for most of my needs. I do have this old, you know, what do you call that, portable drill press thing with an adapter I made to hold my air drill that I take on site with me. But that air drill takes an enormous amount of air and my air compressor can't really keep up with it very well. You know, I can drill holes on site once in a while with it, but to really do a lot of holes, it's not practical. And I thought, oh yeah, still got hydraulic motors on my mind. We just did the ring roller thing, right? So I got this hydraulic motor. I think we'll figure out how to adapt it over to this drill press and make me some kind of adapter so I can put this chuck on there. We'll have a hydraulic drill press. Ugh, I'm having problems with this. So all I'm going to do is just put a hole oh, about there, something like that, so I can bolt that on there. The first thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to use the lathe to drill this hole, is take the tool post off and put my angle plate up on there. Um. Nope, other way. Right, three. A little bit of not quite rightness, but three and then ends up at three, so go with it. So the angle plate's in. I got this thing clamped to it. Well, this isn't really even an angle plate. This is my drill holder. Um, I'm going to drill right there. Probably can't really see it, but should be just enough room between all three of these clamps. I got two machinist clamps up here and I just a regular two-inch clamp down here, you know, C-clamp. I got the spindle cleaned out. And... I'm going to throw a 5 to 4 adapter in there, 4 to 3, and then throw in the chuck. tempting since I'm here to go ahead and come out to this one and put me another hole in it just so I can have a little extended reach for on site for some odd reason no idea why but why not so since I'm here I'm gonna do that I won't bore you with that boring detail the idea is this screws onto there And that's just set up in here. There. Now I just gotta figure out how to put this onto there. I'm gonna be out of room, aren't I? That'd be fine if I just had the uh, drill bit itself go right into this adapter. Time to do a little thinking here. So I pulled the ring roller adapter off of this thing real quick and just stuck the drill bit up here. All these drill bits in my set that I want to use for this are all the same length. I do have just barely over six inches of gap there, which in my mind getting over something like a six inch piece of square tubing is something I might do. Go bigger than that, eh, whatever, figure it out then, right? So I can live with a six inch gap here is what I'm saying. So I think I want to make myself an adapter that it's basically the same thing as this. Instead of making a Morris taper on it, 
like I was wanting to do and use this chuck. I don't think I can do that because I just don't have the room here. So I'm going to make this adapter and then I'm just going to drill a half inch hole in it. Then I can just put these drill bits right in there. I was kind of almost wondering if I couldn't use the keyway to lock it down so it clamps on that entire side somehow. My broaching set does go down to one half. And the 3 16 broach does fit in the one half socket. And a 3 16 broach is, is or, and a 3 16 key is as wide as the flat on this half inch drill bit here. So I'm gonna see if I can't just put a half inch hole in that and slot it for a keyway, put in a couple Allen screws and have that keyway push on that flat. I think that'll work. I don't know, we'll give it a shot. Why not, right? Nothing else to be a learning experience. So now that I've kind of got that figured out, I just need to come up with a whole bunch of measurements, make some notes of it, and start machining, I guess. I'm gonna use this piece of inch and 5 8 shaft. That's actually what I made the ring roller adapter out of. It's the same piece. So I'll take it over, get it shine on, and I think I'm gonna try parting it in the lathe. There's just not a lot left. It'd be kind of hard to hang on to with a quarter band. Possible, but we'll try parting it first. It's pretty awesome to get chips like that, isn't it? If you want to know how that is possible, I did a video on grinding the parting blade, a little tip that I learned on sharpening the tip. You've got to watch that thing. I'll put the card here. If not, I'll put the card in the end screen of this video. I have to say, putting in this keyway, you know, broaching it upside down like that is really nice. It really allows me to see what's going on. The downside is I don't like having my hand holding the work. It makes me a little bit nervous. But visibility is great. Keyways in there, drill bits in there. I grabbed a couple different drill bits and discovered that these shanks are not all the exact same size. So some of them fit really tight and some are a little bit loose. So that means I'm going to have some run out, but, uh, you know, this is obviously not a precision hole rig, right? I mean, I just got to blast a hole in something with it is all I'm going for. So, um, yeah, that's going to work pretty darn nice. All right, now I'm going to put in two Allen screws uh, on this side over here. That way I can squish that key into place. I think that looks good. I need to do a quick shout out. Juan sent me this nice cross slide vise. I'm getting some good use out of it. Thanks, Juan. <sighs> that wrench doesn't fit. 
So I just starting in on the second hole here, and it just dawned on me that I could move the dang table back so the wrench clears. Oh, look at that. I'm a genius. Okay, moment of truth here. I just got done deburring it. We're gonna see if she fits. Uh, I'm a little nervous about this hole being on center, this cross hole pin thing with the setup I have going on over there, but we'll see here. All right, like that, like that. Put my big fat head in the way of the camera. Ooh. Uh oh, oh, no, nope, there it goes. Oh, a little snug that way. Ooh, it goes though. That goes, hey, I can't complain about that. that that actually is nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this off of there and then put it on there. And this three quarter, oh, I got a burr on the end of this three quarter inch bit. That's what's going on. Um, let's see. Let's try the 15 16 instead of going and taking care of that real bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I just got to deeper that up three quarter inch bit there on the end. And it'll work a little better. So, if I loosen up this bolt here, where the, you know, this bolt's together, then the motor swings in and out this way. And over here, which is off frame, is the thing that allowed me to swing this way. So, those two combined that I can figure out exactly where I need that thing and get it right where I want it. It's articulated is the technical term for it. I'm a fan of articulated things. I'm also a fan of hydraulics too, so this project is both. I think I'm ready to make chips. Got the hydraulic power pack plugged in. Sitting back there, goes to the four-way valve here, into the motor here, <sighs> try it out. Yep, it's slow. I just forgot how slow this thing turns off this power pack. We might have to take this out and run it off the crane. actually used in this bit. I don't think it's sharpened correctly. That's painful. So I'm going to swap bits, see if I can get one that's a little bit better than that. These bits are just not sharp and correct at all. And you look at that. Oh, it's terrible. Man. Yeah, I was just like grinding its way through instead of actually drilling. I just didn't want to stop the truck and, you know, shut off the truck and go grind these because I had the truck running. And it really didn't take that long to get through. It was just, you know... I wanted to make the video and finish the video, but yeah, this whole set is this way. Look at that. It's almost a concave. Uh. So anyway, it works. That, the, the drill press works. That's all I care about. Just remember, this is a temporary stopgap for me. It's an idea that I'm just getting out of my head and seeing if I can go anywhere with this. You know, just because I don't have a drill press and because I also need this for on-site work, so... I'm just having a little bit of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this.